Welcome back guys. Today in the video we're going to conclude the scenario we've been looking at comparing all the changes between the old gen and the new gen track Marlins. Now we've seen that the Marlins 6 has had some pretty decent changes. We've seen that the Marlins 7 has really not changed at all. The Marlin 8 has had a minor change but it's a major change. Honestly one little detail has made this bike a whole new bike. It's pretty amazing. So let's get right into it. Don't forget to subscribe and check out all the other videos I have on the channel. So the Trek Marlin 8 Gen 3 is going to be a popular bike. This is now under $2,000 by a significant amount. It has all the features of a new modern mountain bike with a slacker head tube angle, more upright seat position, and that puts you in still a very comfortable position. Very comfortable. I am on a Fuel EX, the brand new one, and I will be doing a video on it. And that is an insanely comfy position. You're upright, you're over the handlebars, but you have good reaction, good control. And this new Marlin series, obviously, is not as aggressive for the downhill as a Fuel EX, but compared to previous Marlins, it handles so well. It'll just change everything you ever had about your old Marlin and make it that much better off road. On road, I don't think you're going to see a huge amount of difference in downside. I think you're still going to be as comfy ripping around town. You will just feel that much more confident where you didn't feel confident on the previous one. This still has that SRAM 12 speed, so it isn't anything crazy fancy. It is an SX, so that is the entry level setup for this. But to be honest, it's still really, really good. Like, apart from the weight and it's not like this bike is insanely heavy. The weight is really the only downside between SX and NX. You do get a bit of speed jump when you go to GX, but now we're talking about a part spec which is worth half this entire bike. So I wouldn't be too disappointed by that. The SX is gonna shift really well, it has a 30 tooth chain ring on the front, so relatively easy gear on the front. But with that 12 speed, you're going to be able to climb absolutely anything. And you have the ability to put a 34 on the front. So if you're doing a lot of commuting, you're going to really want to switch that out. And if you get really strong, you're going to be able to switch that out. So you'll be able to be a little faster in the trails. And with that 12 speed, you're not really going to have any downside in the low range once you reach that level. And like I said, weight range, this whole bike is 31 pounds. And with all the other features it's got, that's pretty, pretty good. Brake-wise, it's sticking with the same Shimano MT200. That seems to be the go-to for any bike priced, honestly, $1,500 to $3,000 in any brand, any model. The Shimano MT200, they work well. They're responsive. They've got a good feel to it. They don't have a lot of customizability to them with the reach and the modulation or anything like that. And they are more three finger kind of brakes and two so for the more experienced person it does feel like a big brake lever but you can always move them in it's not the biggest worry in the world the wheels are still so this is the same as last year but it is an a nice improvement which they are tubeless ready so you are ready to go straight out of the box tubeless obviously they don't come set up so you would have to invest a little bit there but there's no real additional parts apart from um, the tubeless valves and the rim strips and the fluid itself. The tires which come with it are the Maxxis Ardent, the 60 TPI version, 2.4. So you get the EXO casing, so it's a little stiffer, so it'll hold up better around harsher corners. It's going to be a little more durable. It's tubeless ready, so you don't need to buy a new tire, which is one of the biggest costs on top of buying wheels to uh, set up tubeless if that's what you wanted. But overall, it's a nice grippy tire, which again will be much better off-road than a simpler XR2, but still not a downside in town. You're still going to have lots of traction off-road and not too much traction uh, or too many knobbly bits where it's going to feel the vibration of the tire. If you went with a super aggressive tire, you can actually feel those vibrate on the road, on the smooth stuff, and it doesn't really help. It more just kind of impedes. So yeah, the wheels are the Covey. They are double-walled, tubeless, 28-hole. 
that just a great little wheel and trek is really spread in the usage of this rim there's nothing wrong with that i think that might even be the exact wheel that is on my fuel ex and they just change out the hub to make it a little more affordable but hub is less important in my mind you do get some rolling resistance but we're talking very minimal you'd have to really be pushing this bike to the very top of its level before you ever saw anything like that the fork is a RockShox Judy Silver, so this has a solo air spring, so it's fantastic. It's adjustable for your weight with just a little shock pump, and that makes just for a much comfier ride on or off-road. It's going to perform better in all situations because you can customize it, so uh, don't take that for nothing really with the spring ones you're kind of stuck with whatever spring it is and normally you're either too heavy for it or you're too light for it. it's pretty rare you're that perfect weight for it so you can easily overpower it or feel too stiff a very simple air spring really makes up a big difference this is 100 mils of travel so a decent amount not too crazy but it does allow for 120 mil travel fork and Trek now offers a very specific headset spacer so you can even put a tapered head tube in there so your selection for upgrading this to fork is really huge they're really blending this with the Roscoe slash Excalibur range I would not be surprised if the Excalibur range probably disappeared and they just went with this straight up there's no real downside to it in now with its new geometry tubeless wheels I don't see what benefits you'd get going to the Excalibur, except for potentially lighter, but it's not that big of a deal. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. The biggest change in this bike is it comes with a dropper post. So this dropper post is just a fantastic addition. The fact that the bike barely changed in price is like they did a price decrease without having one. You're going to be be spending 200 to 300 dollars to get a dropper post the new frame allows for internal routing cable so it looks really nice and really clean you are gonna like the dropper post and that is for people ripping around town never leaving just doing bike paths and little gravel roads climbing on and off and adjusting it on longer rides to a more comfortable position is fantastic overkill yes but fantastic yes I highly recommend you try this bike out. You will like it a lot, especially if you are going to be adventuring a little bit more and or if you are going to be riding a lot, having those few adjustable features with the suspension, seat post, tubeless ready option, you're really going to widen your horizons as well. Even in town with that big chain ring availability, you're not going to be disappointed with how fast this bike can whip around town. A 34 tooth Front ring is really going to make that top speed be pretty satisfactory, I'd assume, unless you were like commuting at the highest of paces, but why are you even looking at a mountain bike, right? With the through skew on the back end, it does help for alignment of the wheel if you are taking this places, taking the wheel on and off. Overall, I'm not sure if it would make it that much stiffer, but... Um, it is an improvement and it will help with the beginners lining up the wheels and honestly even as I set up my bike mine's all through axle it is very nice that it's perfectly aligned with very little kind of thinking behind it so that is something nice that this one has and that's the same with all the new Trek Marlins 6, 7 and 8. Overall I do believe that this is a really nice bike I think anyone who buys it is going to be really impressed. The colorways this year look fantastic, even with those few color mash little accessories they've done on it. It looks great. You've got lots of room to upgrade if you want, but for most people, this is going to be all the bike they ever need. I would suggest looking at a new pedal. i put some links below on Amazon if you want to grab a couple. The ones which come with it are just a basic plastic one, even for ripping around town. You'd be better off going with something with a little more bite to it. Your foot's just going to stay on, you know, on perfectly dry days, it's all right. But you get a little wet and all of a sudden your foot slips off very easily. Um, going to something a little nicer would be better. I have seen a lot of people as well upgrade the grips. If you ride in a long time, those Bontrager ones, they're not insanely comfortable. So going to like a silicone one where you get a little more squish to it makes a huge, huge difference huge difference 
So yeah, the Marlin 8. It was a popular bike when it came out. It really started pushing where the Marlin series were with the new geometry, upgradability, and range of upgrades you can do to this bike as long as well as what it already comes with. This truly is a fantastic option for honestly anyone. If you want to ride a bike and you want to have fun and you want to really push it, you know, within limits, if you're going to go to Whistler, probably not the bike you're looking for. But if you just want to adventure everywhere, get out there and have all the features that you might need on a bike, this has got it with room for upgrade for that kind of outrageous stuff before you even look into a full suspension. I think the Marlin 8 is going to be a fantastic choice for a lot of people. It looks great, and price-wise, it's actually pretty reasonable. You know, your other competition to this bike, my opinion, would be the Roscoe 7 Series, which still starts pretty high up. Even on sales right now, you still going to be spending a few more hundred dollars, and really all you're getting is that tubeless setup tires, teeny bit different geometry, but... It's not better for around town, and this one will still perform very well off-road. So it's kind of give or take. you got to figure it out a little bit. I think you'll make no wrong choices by going with this bike. You'll be able to really go pretty much anywhere you want off-road and really enjoy the on-road. I think they did a really good job. Hopefully, towards the end of the summer, there's even more sales, but I believe Trek has some sales on. I'll put some links again for the old gen. I'm not sure if any of the new ones are coming up on sale. But inventory is definitely fixed, and uh, I don't think there's any worry about that stuff anymore. All right, guys. Thanks for riding along with me. Have a good ride out there, and good luck.